Merry Christmas to all, and welcome here on this Christmas day. Let's take a moment to, uh, to greet one another around us. Perhaps there's people you haven't uh, said hi to, and share the peace of Christ with each other. Don't be shy.
now to turn to page song number 241 in your Voices Together book, or read your, no, your words up there, to sing, Oh, come all ye faithful, please stand. And you know what, I, I swore I'd never do this, but I'm going to do this. Can everyone move closer together? <laughs> you guys are also spread so far <laughs> out. Anyone has the guts to do it. I just, and I also understand if it's like, no way, I can't do that. But you're welcome to do it. And, or sing really loud. That would help too. <laughs> all right, let's do all, oh come, all you faithful. Let us pray. Our loving and gracious God, we are here for we have heard the news that a Savior is born in Bethlehem. And as the shepherds proclaimed the news, the Magi came from afar. May this news be known in this place and in our lives each day. Another way of hearing these words, another way of thinking about the scripture passage. The entrance is painful, then quiet. The quiet of a normal night with rustling here and there, mice in the hay, blood on the floor, and the muffled exhaustion of the afterbirth. 
It was political red tape that brought them to this place and a raw-boned ride on a donkey. It was commuter traffic and out-of-town guests, and it was warmer among the animals than it was outside. We like to think that she had help, besides the fumbling murmurs of her husband. We like to think the rags were clean. We don't like to think about problems with breastfeeding or the possibility of tearing and infection or the first sleepless night. Let us ponder, we who are born of women, the miracles of a safe pregnancy, a healthy baby, enough to eat, the warmth of animals, a hug or a back rub, and the breath of a slumbering infant. You still work in our weaknesses, God, molding miracles out of mess, wrapping gifts in skin. Gift giver, we are grateful for the tiny, squalling gift that shook the world to its core. Let's stand to sing, To Us a Child of Hope is Born. Let us pray. Healing God, on this day of joy and celebration, we also bring to mind and lift up to you the concerns of our hearts in this world. We pray for families where there will be someone missing around the table this Christmas. And may the grief not overwhelm, but may there be hope found in the coming of your son. We pray for the people in this world it will not be safe this Christmas. Bring peace, Lord, in places where there is war, in places where people have fled homes. And live with the threats 
of violence. May the message of peace that you bring, O Christ, transform all the hearts and minds on this planet, that your kingdom may come. We lift up our prayers for loved ones may be struggling with illness, mental health challenges, anxieties. And we remember, Lord, that you did not arrive in a perfect world. but came amidst the, the messiness, the complications of this broken world. And we pray for the church as we seek to be a vibrant witness to what creation is like when you reign, when you come. Grant us love for one another, love for the world, compassion and grace. Forgive us our sins. We name and confess what comes to mind. And Holy Spirit, reveal to us the ways that we have failed to serve you most fully and completely. We do find our hope and our new beginnings in this Christmas story. We are renewed and forgiven by your grace. And we anticipate the renewal of all things, a new heaven and a new earth, for which this day is only a foretaste. For all that you have done for creation, these offerings and gifts shared today through electronic means and gifts of time and resources and prayers and acts of kindness. All that is good comes from you, the source of all goodness. We lift our prayers in the name of Christ. Amen. We'll receive the offering and also the kids can come forward.
Oh, oh, oh. It's cold. It's cold and rainy. Oh, hey. Oh, there are kids here this morning. Good. Oh. Oh. Hi. Do you remember me? I'm one of the shepherds. You probably met one of the other shepherds last week, eh? It was ra- or the week before, I should say. It was raining. It's still raining in Bethlehem. Did you know that? Oh, still raining. It's still the rainy season. But you know what? What's today? Does anybody know? It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Oh, and you know what? I am so excited because that is what we have been shepherds have been just wanting to talk about this whole time. It's, it's an old story, but you know what? It feels new to me every time I tell it. And that night changed everything. And it comes straight from the Bible, from the scriptures. Can I tell it to you right now? I want to tell it to you and I want to make sure I get it right. So you make sure to listen very carefully. Make sure I get all the little details right. So that night, we shepherds were living out in the fields near Bethlehem, watching our sheep. And it was raining, just like tonight. And all of a sudden, an angel appeared to us and the glory of the Lord shone around us. We were scared. But the angel said to us, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. Today in David's town in Bethlehem, a Savior has been born for you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be the sign. You have to look for a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a feed trough, in a manger, where the animals eat. Then a huge group of angels joined the first one, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth to those on whom God's favor rests. Whew. When the angels went back to heaven, we said to another, we have to go to Bethlehem and see what this is all about. See the things that the Lord has told us about. So we hurried off and we found, do you know who was there? Mary, not that one, and Joseph (laughs) and the baby lying in the cloth, just like the angels had said, lying in a manger. And when we had seen him, we spread the word that uh, to everyone that we saw, that we saw the child just like we had been told. And everyone who heard our story was just as amazed as we were. And then after that, we returned back to our pastures with our sheep. And we were telling everybody about the things that we had heard and seen. So, did I get all the details right? Have you guys heard that story before? Yeah? yeah? yeah. Maybe a couple times already? Well, I will never get over it because you know what? I was just a little bit older than you. I was a kid when it first happened. And I was just so amazed because you know what? We were out in the fields. We were poor. We never went to school. But we could see that this thing was going to change our lives. Can you imagine if you saw angels? It would be amazing. The Savior, the Messiah of the world was born. And we, the shepherds watching the sheep, were the first ones to go and get to see him. To this day, I'm going to tell everybody, and I always tell everyone, don't be afraid, for I have good news for you. We aren't on our own anymore. The Savior has come. Can you say that with me? Our Savior has come. Our Savior has come. Let's do it all together. One, two, three. Savior. Our, our Savior, Savior has come. come. Good job. Okay, let's pray. Done. Let's pray. Shh. Lord Jesus, Thank you for this wonderful, wonderful day. We are full of joy that you came to be one of us. Thank you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, i got to get back to the fields. But before I go, I need to put one more brick on the wall that we are restoring. And this one says, does anyone know what this one says? It says, Jesus. Jesus. And look at that. The wall is done. You can go back to your seats. You can go back to your seats now. Let's turn to page or song number 206, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. If you'd prefer to sit, you can. If you'd like to stand, you can. So let's enjoy it.
Words from Isaiah chapter 9. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward. And forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your faith shine that we may be saved. Good morning again. Are any of you familiar with the ancient art of Kintsugi or Kintsu Kuroi? This is a centuries old Japanese art form or method of fixing broken poetry, pottery, broken pottery. The word Kintsugi, and I'll ask Jason to bring up a picture at this time, the word beautifully translates to mean golden joinery. The idea behind it is simple. When something breaks, instead of trying to hide the crack lines and glue it back together in such a way that it makes the cracks invisible, kintsugi is the practice of highlighting a dish's imperfections and crack lines with gold or other beautiful powder like silver, or platinum. The result is a dish that is enhanced by its added color and pattern as a result of its prior brokenness. It is a unique way of celebrating a dish's fractures or breaks instead of trying to disguise them or hide them. In fact, many times, kintsugi will make a repaired piece even more beautiful than the original. There is a bowl with gold lines on it. We have a similar art form in the Mennonite tradition, quilting. The act of taking scraps and leftover pieces of fabric and sewing them together to create something new and beautiful and useful and warm. Many of you here, I'm sure, can think of a quilt that you have seen or that one point had made out of old dresses or shirts, old blankets or sheets. I'll sh ask you to bring up the quilt piece also. Things that had ceased their usefulness and now were used for something else, something beautiful. There's a picture there. And also, if you can't think of a quilt that is made out of old scraps, you're free to look at the one in front of the pulpit here that my grandmother made out of old bed sheets and dresses that her daughters had outgrown and made a useful new quilt out of it. Both kintsugi and quilting are acts of restoration. Restoration has been our theme for Advent this year. And I, when I thought about it, it seemed so natural to me that I wondered why this wasn't our theme every year for Advent. 
There are so many passages in our Old Testament and Psalms especially when the people are crying out to God for restoration. They are crying out to God to make things right. They are crying out to God to be saved from their situation and are crying out for God to intervene and to look with them on them with favor. Psalm 80 is a great example. Three times the phrase, restore us, O God, is repeated, each time expanding to add a little more emphasis and fervency. First, restore us, O God. Then restore us, O God of hosts. Then restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. The people are crying out to God because they are in the midst of a natural disaster. Their nation, as they know it, is under attack, and they do not know what to do. They feel outnumbered and overpowered. They feel abandoned by God and are seeking after God's presence and God's goodness to be once again poured out upon them. They are asking for restoration, that they may be restored individually and nationally. It kind of sounds like they are at the end of their rope, and the only thing they have left is to cry out to God for restoration. And that is why I think this theme of restoration is so natural, especially at this time. There have been so many times in the past few years when I've felt like the world around me is is just in chaos. And the only thing I have been able to do is to cry out to God for peace, for God's presence, or for God to intervene in the situation before us. In the war in Ukraine in the takeover by the Taliban, COVID, women's rights in Iran, political polarization in our country and to the south, the famine in Ethiopia, the rights of Palestinians, the climate crisis, racism in our country as well as in our own community. And I could go on. In in these situations, it feels like the only option we have Well, the only concrete thing we can do is cry out to God. But today is meant to be a day of celebration and hope. Today is a day of restoration. Because Isaiah said that the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Isaiah was talking to the people of Israel, but he could just as well be talking to us Because just like the people of Israel, we have seen darkness. We have been pushed to our limits, and we have cried out to God. And to us, Isaiah says, those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. Through this passage, Isaiah is trying to remind Israel, as well as anyone else who would listen, that in the midst of their uncertainty, in the midst of our instability and darkness, in the midst of everything that is beyond our control and even comprehension, Emmanuel, God is with us. God's presence is the shining light penetrating whatever darkness we encounter. Isaiah is offering us this hope, hope in the midst of the darkness and hope for the future. He's drawing us a picture of the joy that we will experience when this hope is fully accomplished. And he's offering us a picture of the joy that we will experience when restoration is complete. And he's offering us a vision of what is possible. Sometimes our imagination fails us, and we are unable to see beyond our current circumstances. But the words of Isaiah are here to help us. Isaiah talks about the birth of a child, the birth that we call the birth of Jesus, that we celebrate this day. But his message is so much more than a birth announcement. For this child that he speaks of signifies the hope for good leadership to navigate through the myriad of political, cultural, economic, and environmental issues that we face. This child signifies that the justice and righteousness of God will rule the day 
with fairness and healthy relationships and boundaries. This child signifies the return to the harmony of the created order of Genesis. In essence, this child will be a leader of the best kind that anyone can imagine, with wisdom and strength in all the right ways. This child, Jesus, signifies that God's light has come into the world and is working in our world to this day. And what a beautiful picture that is. Isaiah is not simply saying that God will come alongside them in their troubles and make it bearable. He is saying that God will restore the throne of David and his kingdom, that there will be endless peace, and that God's divine will for creation will come to fruition, and it will be beautiful. This child that Isaiah is proclaiming is the sign of hope for the future for the people of Israel but also for us in this time. It is a sign of what is possible. And the rest of the New Testament scriptures proclaim joyously that this proclamation has come to its fulfillment in Jesus. Jesus is the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father and prince of peace. Jesus showed us the beauty of this restoration in everything that he said and did. He healed the sick. He judged disputes with fairness. He navigated cultural differences. He respected the created world around him and made room for progress. He welcomed the children and the vulnerable and created a family of followers that became a community. Jesus initiated the breaking in of God's kingdom into this world He started the process. His birth that we celebrate this day was a monumental step closer to the kingdom of God coming into this world. And there are many other glimpses that we get into the true sense of God's kingdom here among us. Of the good news present with us in the good stories around us the glimpses of restoration that we can see because these are manifestations of peace and justice that Isaiah also prophesied about. This can be simple things like friends gathering in support when someone receives bad news, the birth of a child after a miscarriage, finding Ray Schellenberg before the winter storm hit, the right medication to treat someone's depression. These are all signs of restoration in our world. Or there can be bigger examples of that as well that are more public. This last week, scientists in the U.S. announced that they have made a breakthrough in their quest to harness fusion energy or nuclear fusion. This is the same type of energy that powers the sun, apparently. It is said to be a form of clean, carbon-free energy that does not rely on fossil fuels or other traditional sources of energy. And they are still decades away from being able to produce this for the public. But this, is, this fusion energy could be one component in the fight against climate change and pollution that our world is dealing with. There was another story from early on in the year that said healthcare care providers in several Canadian provinces can now prescribe time in national parks to boost people's mental and physical health. This is an exciting and creative way to think about and treat health challenges. Nature prescriptions, as they're called, have been growing in recent years in awareness and effectiveness for better immune function and life expectancy to reduce risk of heart disease. Modern medicine is acknowledging and encouraging the healing powers of nature, of God's good creation. And one of the results of these prescriptions is more awareness of our need to preserve the created order, preserve the parks and the animals that call those parks home. 
And there was a story this summer from the US Soccer Federation that made a historical agreement to pay both men and women on their national soccer teams equally. This means that their pay will not be dependent on their sex. Both women and men will be paid the same pay scale and will have the same amount of prize money available to him, to them. This is the first of its kind, a collective bargaining agreement that achieves equal pay and has the potential to be a global standard moving forward. A new way of looking at how we view individuals in their sports. And lastly, there was a girl in California that sent a letter to animal control authorities in her area asking for a license to own a unicorn. After careful consideration, the authorities were more than happy to approve this license for her, if she could find one, that is. They were impressed with the thoughtfulness that she put into providing a loving home for an animal and the young hope that she had in one day finding a unicorn. These are all stories of hope, glimpses of restoration around us today. They are joyful examples of the world becoming a more beautiful place, which is what we are celebrating this day and every day as we acknowledge Jesus' place in our lives and in our world. The coming of Jesus as a little tiny baby made the world a more beautiful place. It made the world more like God's kingdom, God's good and beautiful kingdom. And in response, we are invited to join in in creating beauty. We are invited to join in and look for the places in need of restoration and joy. And we are invited to lend whatever resources we have to the cause. Throughout Advent, we saw this holy old blanket slowly get restored, patch by patch by patch. We have seen the beauty that can come by someone sewing together patches of fabric to make a warm and beautiful quilt. And we can be inspired by the Japanese practice of kintsugi that is able to take broken pieces from a bowl and with the addition of gold powder, put them back together to create a beautiful work of art. Our invitation this morning is to join in somehow and use our resources and our gifts to help in the process of restoring our world, to bear witness to the vision that Isaiah shared and to seek whatever partial realization of this vision that we can. It might not be perfect, but that is not our goal. Our goal is to share Isaiah's vision and give people hope that one day Christ's promise of God's kingdom will fully come among us. And our goal is to create beauty out of brokenness. As a symbol of this invitation, we have patches on the communion table. These patches would normally be used for restoring clothing or blankets. But today we are going to use them as a reminder of our call to work for restoration in our world. In a few moments, you'll be invited to come forward and pick up a patch. Take it home, put it in your wallet or purse, or on your bedside table or on your fridge. And every time you see it, remember that Jesus' desire that that which is broken gets put back together. That which is sick is healed, those who are hungry are fed, and those who are pushed down are lifted up. And may these patches also challenge us to consider how we can use the gifts that we have to create beauty out of the brokenness around us. Or to think of or brainstorm what resources we have that we may be able to use to fill in the missing pieces or act as gold powder to draw attention to the beauty within the brokenness. And who knows, it might just make things more beautiful than before.
So during this time, we will sing and celebrate the birth of Christ child. As you come forward and receive the symbolic material we can use to join in Christ's work of restoration. I invite Amy and Hilda forward, and when the music starts, come as you feel led. Pick up a piece of fabric, and then you can go back to your seats. Sky Song 216 in the Blue hymn Hymnal. Please sing out. This is your last chance this Christmas. Thank you. 
I invite you to stand. We each have a tangible sign now of the promise of restoration, and may we be the sowers and the fabric all together in the work of God uh, that begins at Christmas and the coming of Jesus. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. And let us sing together, Joy to the World.